Hey guys, this is Max from FL Studio Tips and here's a second volume of 10 mind-blowing FL Studio tricks that I can't live without. You watched the last video over 200,000 times and I'm sure that this one you will like as much. Make sure to hit a like, subscribe and let's get started. If you use your typing keyboard to play inside of FL Studio, If you right-click the typing keyboard to piano keyboard button, you can choose the layout. By default, it is the piano one. But you can, for example, choose minor natural. Now, whatever key you press on your typing keyboard, it will stay in key. In addition, you will have four octaves starting from Z, A, Q, and one. Try with different scale, for example, I really like the Japanese incense scale. You can literally play random notes on your typing keyboard and you can't go wrong. It definitely happened to you already if you accidentally drop a sample to your piano roll. You can easily get rid of it by hitting Alt plus N, but it's actually very, very useful. Simply open FPC with your favorite drums and drag and drop a random drum loop onto the piano roll and you'll be able to see every single drum hit in here. And now by using your samples, you can replicate the whole drum loop using your samples in very, very easy and quick way. This is some next level secret. I personally hate looking for plugins in this mess. You can, for example, click H and it will show you all plugins that start with H, but if you want fruity reverb, it will show you every fruity VST. But the solution is as simple as instead of left clicking, right clicking and say I want Maximus, I write Max and hit enter. Boom, as easy as that. Although if you are too used to this view, you can go to plugin database right here, effects and open the folder in your browser and here you'll be able to sort the plugins manually. Let's say for example, you want fruity chorus to be on the very top, you just copy it in here and now you'll have also in here at the top. But if you're ultra lazy, go to your effects database and for example, if you use parametric EQ2 a lot, simply rename it with a number like one or a sign like dot before the name of the plugin. If you do that, you can simply left click and hit one. It will automatically load the parametric EQ for you in an eye blink. I also use a lot of reverb. Let's add two before the name, two. Boom. Same thing you can do with your instruments. Just go to generators. And for example, if you like serum a lot, add one before it, and then you just click plus one, and here you have it. In the next one year of making music, you will save a lot of hours searching for the plugins you want. You have your 808, which is very short and will not work when making slides. Simply hit Ctrl and E to open it in Edison. Now hit number four on your keyboard or go to this magnet and snap to zero crossing. Now zoom in, mark one full wave, make sure you're marking the whole period of the waveform here and hit Ctrl and L. Now make sure all of those faders are turned off and if you don't hear any clipping, hit accept. If you do hear clipping, then just make sure you're marking the whole period of the wave file and now simply zoom out, mark everything with Ctrl and A and drag and drop it to your sampler. infinite 808 just like this perfect with this trick you'll be able to add a human feeling to any instrument and that is quite important so this guy for example is very very robotic first thing is that we humans would not be able to play all of those notes at the same time so we're not talking about strumming you can of course hit ctrl a and strum everything That somehow works, but what I like to do is what not many people are talking about is hitting Shift and R a couple of times. And now holding Alt, drag some of them to the left and change the velocity a little bit, still holding Alt and scrolling down. And now changing the length of the note. Now hit Shift and R a couple of times again. And now drag them, for example, right a little bit. And this time bring the velocity a little bit higher. Again, maybe shorten the MIDI a little bit. Now hit Shift and R a couple of times again. Now, for example, drag it again a little bit to the right, change the velocity, and you can do it as many times as you want. How it sounds now? 
if the difference is not enough for you, hit Alt plus X and now you can simply multiply the velocity as we had and the difference will be a little bit more harsh. Trust me, whenever you use this trick on any organic sounding instrument, it will breathe whole new life to your track. With this trick, you'll never ever again sidechain as you used to. So all of you know already the classic sidechain technique where you just sidechain the kick to your sidechain bus where all of your instruments are, apply limiter and sidechain it with the fruity limiter. Thing is that you don't have the perfect control for how long your sidechain works. For example, here our kick, we can't control it too much, but what if, look what I show you. Let's play Fruity Balance and make automation out of it. And now simply design how you want to your sidechain to look like, for example, something like this. Maybe something a little bit softer. That's quite perfect for my ear. And now you can delete this guy and now simply go to your drum spotter, find the automation clip in the channel rack that you just made, copy and paste the MIDI from the kicks channel and look what happens. With the MIDI now, we are triggering the automation clip, which was very short and just dugged down the volume for a couple of milliseconds. And that's how you basically can now sidechain. Basically, you can create a layer, mark those two guys, set children, and now instead of those guys, just trigger the layer and you have... Both of them will be triggered. If you have different drum patterns over your project, you can simply mark them all, control G to merge them all. Now you're sure that you can simply cut and paste the MIDI to your layer and throughout the whole track, the MIDI clip will be triggered. If you want to fix the shape of the sidechain, simply left click once on the input and left click on the playlist and you can now adjust it for example like that. basically make one change somewhere in the middle of your project and it just translates on everything and oh boy i don't want to get into what even better ideas you can realize with this concept if you watch our online courses you definitely know already the humanizer patcher preset which works like a tape vinyl effect like a random vinyl thing that makes everything more spooky and sounding more like a sample there's a pretty nice alternative that I want to show you, and this one is using Delay 3. We want to take feedback all the way down, take the dry all the way down, and modulation all the way down. Now, in the delay time, you unmark the tempo sync, and if you trigger the time while everything is playing, You can now create automation clip out of time and basically make a short random automation. It's a little bit too much, but we definitely get the point. Although instead of using automation clip, if you apply Fruity Peak controller, and go to your delay, right click and link it to controller. In the internal controller, choose peak controller LFO, accept, and now simply change shape to random and now decrease the speed and play with the volume. Now, if you move face, you will get a jitter effect. Believe me, you'll find it very, very useful very, very soon. I also prepared for you even more cool tricks using Delay 3 that is going to be released very, very soon on our YouTube channel. So make sure you hit a like and subscribe to not miss out when it comes out. So here's your 808 and you want to make exact same rhythm for your kick drum. How do we do it very, very quick? Simply Control A and Control C, your 808, go to your kick or your layer as we did previously with the sidechain automation. And if you paste it here, it won't work. So simply hit Alt plus K and put everything to C note.
like this trick plus this automation trick right here, you will be the king of optimized kick, 808 and side chaining. Let me know which one is your favorite so far because this one is my favorite one on this list. And that's making bass, leads and practically any instrument out of any sample. Drag any kick sample to your channel rack, open it up, increase the crossfade and play with the sample start and length right here to get some kind of smooth waveform like that. And now as you got this kind of low end bass, you can go to pre-computed effects, mark clip and boost it up. Now you can go to pitch, for example, increase the attack, play with the settings right here to make this. You can also play with the mode X, decrease it here. It's a basically a new synth and those are presets. That's a Melbourne bounce bass already. I can make a full video on that. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do it. Everybody loves vocals and it's proven that vocals keep listeners engaged to our track. And one even cooler way to keep them engaged would be with some cool effects, exactly using vocals. So take a random vocal sample and open in Edison using Control and E shortcut. Now hit Control and B and amount to 100% and accept. Now mark everything and control L. Again, we are looping it. Now drag it to your channel rack and write a long MIDI note. And now open frequency shifter on top of that, set it to 20 kilohertz and create automation clip out of the frequency. Now just make it go up like that. If you want to learn FS3 inside out and bring your production to the next level, check the first links in the description. We've got amazing online courses for you which will cut the years of your learning curve and if you feel like they didn't, you get 100% of your money back. What you see on this channel is just a top of an iceberg of what we've prepared for you inside of our programs. If you like today's video and have idea for the next one, leave it in the comments down below. If you'd like to see more like this, hit a like and subscribe to not miss out when new content like this is coming out. See you in the next video.